Okay, well, welcome everyone. We're doing some interviews to people who have been doing conversions. In this case, we're not talking about a conversion, but an Enfield, which is a car from long ago that uh, Greg Partridge, who's the president of the Australian Electric Vehicle Association, has imported and is in the process of bringing it back to life. But anyway, Greg, tell us a bit of the history of this particular Enfield. Tell well, us a bit about Enfields and what they got up to. This particular Enfield, it's a 1974 and it was actually imported into the country as new in 1974. There were actually five of them brought into the country at the time and in total they made 108 of these Enfields. They were made in the Isle of Wight and also in Greece. And it's a fully um, aluminium body uh, with a tubular steel frame. And so, so what, what, how much, uh, what was the capacity, like how much energy are we talking about? What was the range of it? I think so you use as lead, lead acid, it, if I remember It had right. lead acid in it, it still yeah. does. It had about nine kilowatt hours of um, storage in it originally. Um, I'm hoping to shortly um, put a lithium pack in it, which will give me a significantly longer range and also reduce the weight considerably. Um, it's also about to get a, a new paint job, because as you can see, that the paint work is in fairly poor condition. But how about so, mechanically, like how's the chassis, how's the... the there's um, no the... rust in it whatsoever because mm. this particular vehicle came from South Australia. All the English um, uh, Enfields, they had a lot of problems with their, their rust on their steel frames. But uh, this one is in actually structurally very good condition. So hang on, you're saying they're steel or aluminium? What's the story here? So it's got a steel tubular frame mm -hmm. and a aluminium body Aluminium body, okay. So it makes it very light. Okay, so you, so I think this is not your first Enfield, but if you don't mind talking about yes, it, there was an well, earlier Enfield too. Are you willing is, to tell us a bit about the, your earlier Enfield adventures? All right, yeah? so this is Enfield Mark II. The first Enfield I actually imported about 18 months ago from the UK. Um, I bought it from uh, eBay uh, through a car dealer who promised me it was in excellent condition without any rust. And from the photos, it looked fantastic. Now, somewhere between the UK and finally getting into Australia, all the batteries disappeared. And when it arrived in Australia, it turned out to be a rust bucket. The entire steel frame had rusted away to the point where you could put your fingers through the frame. And uh, there was bits of sheet steel where your feet are meant to go, uh, covering up the uh, rust holes. So unfortunately, that turned out to be a terminal um, did vehicle. you give them bad feedback on uh, eBay, you know? Sadly, it took three months to actually get it into country. Uh, importing any car into the country is a very expensive exercise, so I wasn't able to provide any feedback up to that period of time. That um, vehicle has since gone on to... Well, what was the name of this dealer in the UK, just so uh, we can be no, on the record? I can't go there. Oh, uh, OK. <laughs> but that vehicle will be used for spare parts for this Enfield because many of the parts, including the glass, are very hard to come by but other parts of it were actually um, pinched off uh, cars like the Mini, uh, Austin Avenger, and uh, other v UK vehicles as so well. So it, it wasn't built from scratch, they did like adapt bits from other cars they to used, come up with the Enfield? Um, mini wheels, mm. um, Austin, sorry, um, uh, Avenger uh, door handles, mm. um, and the headlights were uh, from another English car as well, but all the glass was uh, original to this particular vehicle. The sliding windows here, they came from an early model Mini as well. Okay, so tell us a bit about how the, how much, how many people purchased Enfields in the UK? What were they so, like during the prime? How, how are they considered by people in the UK? Right. Tell us a bit about the history of the Enfield. So uh, 61 of them were purchased by uh, the British Electrical Authority to use as trial vehicles. The rest of them went to private hands and a few of them were exported um, overseas. We had five of them brought into Australia uh, for our lead battery research um, uh, organisation. Um, four of those still exist. There's two of them in Ballarat. Um, there's one in uh, the Mornington Peninsula. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's the, electric, that's the that's motor Charlie's, vehicle museum. Charlie's, uh, Charlie's Car Museum. Charlie's Car Museum, and, yeah. Uh, this is the fourth one. Mm -hmm. um, we assume that the fifth one has been written off. Right. But, uh, okay. There's probably only about 15 left in the world now. Okay. All right, well, Jason, any questions you want to ask behind the camera? Wow, Jason's actually lost for words. This must be a first. 
All right. Well, anyway, Greg, any last comments you'd like to make? Stuff that we haven't covered so far that you might like to bring well, up? Well, it's about to go undergo a full restoration, new paintwork, lithium batteries, and um, repairing some of the interior as well. So hopefully by the um, EV Expo next year in Victoria, uh, I'll be able to have it on display and I'm Well, I think you, you, you sir, have a, have a project ahead of you. Is I have that indeed. That? You are, indeed you do. So hopefully we'll get it down to Victoria next year. Okay, well, all right. Well, Greg, look, best of luck with it. Thank you and, very much, John. Uh, th thanks for uh, showing, showing off your Enfield at the Electric Vehicle Expo. Thank you. Okay.